what the fuck you guys come to my channel expecting. If you don't expect me to make a video after I haven't slept for 38 hours and chat shit about baby metal and death grips, then honestly, why are you, why are you even coming to watch my videos at all? But uh, I guess I should explain what I meant because uh, when I went back and, and watched the video, I understand why people were confused because the way I said it is the sort of thing that only I would understand. <laughs> if someone... If, if someone said that to me, like, Baby Metal and death, death Grips, listen to this part of the song and listen to the other part of the song, they're basically the same song. I'd be like, oh yeah, I understand what you mean. You don't mean they're literally the same song, because of, like, any fucking living human being can tell those are not literally the same song. You're talking about on a meta-textual level, but apparently most people don't seem to be able to understand what meta-text is, so I guess I'm going to have to explain it uh, to, you, <laughs> to you people. Um... So first I, I looked into who wrote this song, Mega Kitsune, and it's it's actually this guy, the singer of the band Dugout. Um, you probably don't know Dugout because they're not very uh, well known, but uh, you may know a band called Maximum the Hormone, and uh, the drummer from, the, the, the guy who like made, Max, the guy who formed Maximum the Hormone used to play drums in this band called Dugout, uh, which is a very different band from Maximum the Hormone. They're like a kind of 60s garage rock with like a little bit of pop punk influences in there so that kind of explains why this song is so damn has like such a good uh, chorus this this is mega kids and it probably has the best chorus of any baby metal song or like the most catchy chorus of any baby metal song because it's written by a guy who basically is an expert on writing catchy pop hooks, right? That's that's what Garage Rock is. Right? It's like, it's got that, it's got a really, you know. Okay, then it has that bit in the middle, which kind of reminds me of AA Equal. I don't know if you know that other obscure Japanese band, but um, <clears throat> if, if I look them up, should have got these guys uh, up before. Uh, they're like so these guys also uh the guy who who started AA Equal is also a part of Baby Metal. He wrote some Baby Metal songs. I don't know if he explicitly wrote uh, Mega Kitsune, but he definitely uh has like a hand in the band, which is probably why this that part kind of sounds like this. Here, you recognize that? It's very, it sounds very similar, right? Because this guy who started A Equal, or like the frontman of A Equal, also works on Baby Metal. And uh, he, in fact, I believe this guy wrote uh, Give Me Chocolate, or Gimme Choco, whatever it's called. Uh, so that, it probably is why this song kind of sounds like that. I, he was probably involved in it in some way or something. Uh, maybe, maybe he has a writing credit, maybe he doesn't, I don't know, but anyway, the part of the song that I was specifically talking about was the, the drop, where it, it just plays, um, like, this is the drop, I d maybe, maybe, maybe people aren't as familiar with this song as, as I am, I don't know why I'm familiar with this song, but, um, fucking, it, first of all, it's a banger, not gonna lie, Yeah. Right, pretty well, very pretty well known riff there. Um, I was mistaken in my original video. I said it was a shamisen. It's actually a koto. Uh, so excuse me for that. Um, but yeah. Uh, it's a very, very well-known song, even, like, in Japan, incredibly well-known, even outside of Japan, like, probably the most famous piece of traditional Japanese music, uh, which is why it's funny to me that they, they did this, that the drop of their song is just that, like, that other, like, someone else's song. It kind of reminds me of something that, like, uh, uh, the Baho surfers would do, like, um, you know, Sweat Loaf where it literally just is the riff from Sweet, uh, Sweet Leaf by Black Sabbath, and they just took that and put it in their song. It kind of reminds me of that sort of, like, weird, like, kind of meta, postmodern, like, reference culture kind of thing. Right? 
that like the the joke is that they made this song really over the top by putting pick scores over it. And it's the same thing that Death Grips did, right? So most of the time with samples, the kind of the the tradition is to 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 go crate digging and to like to like find an obscure song, an obscure like soul sample to put in a hip hop song. But instead, they took a link ready like the, everyone fucking knows. It's also complete. It's like that's the other thing. Is it? It's a completely different atmosphere to the rest of the song. Like. It, it they completely retextualize recontextualize uh, another song to suit their needs just fucking it's metal as fuck like they just take this other song and they're like nope fuck what you originally intended with this song it's ours now and then they just turn it into a, like a you know this we all know this hit 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 You know, they barely changed it. They just added, like, a kick and a clap sample. That's basically it. Uh, and then the, the, the lyrics over it, but completely re- recontextualizes the song that everyone knows, brown, 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 you know, rumble. Very, very famous, but very well-known, well-known song. It's essentially the same thing. You see? it's There you go. Do I make sense now? It's all about how they took a well-known song, they recontextualized it for their own needs, and completely mangled the original intention, the original meaning of the song, in a sort of weird postmodern way, and, and they made it really over the top, like, just pushed it to its absolute limits, despite what the original intentions of the song may or may not mean, which, in my opinion, is very reflective of the sort of postmodern death of the author kind of like way society is and neither of these songs was a coincidence because this guy from dugout is like a pretty he's making music for a long time everyone involved in baby metal is like a good musician i mentioned um i mentioned Colta of the deepers before uh the guy from Colta of the deepers wrote some baby metal songs i forget which ones but he wrote um he he uh wrote and produced some of the baby some of the songs that that baby metal released uh on their first album i don't know about the second album but yeah um <clears throat> so the entire team behind baby metal were like seasoned musicians not just in metal but a lot of them like sort of in the whole japanese avant-garde underground scene and they just came together to make something that is incredibly commercially successful and uh and uh whilst, whilst also being just a, a complete clusterfuck but none of these people are like amateurs like they know their shit which is why it works <laughs> because if if i like if if i did this it would come off sounding like shit you'd be like what the fuck were you thinking but because it's in the context of baby metal which is already a sort of like primes you to be aware for like a hypercultural sort of just mangle of 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 all sorts of clashes of uh, pop culture of elements and and like uh, the society is in general just sort of colliding at this one middle point in this very similar way to death grips um it primes you to to be ready for this chorus or this this breakdown which is the, why the breakdown works and why when i said like this changed my entire life what i meant was when i heard this i, I finally understood the entire like japanese uh, concept or uh, end of concept cultural whatever I, I don't know how to explain it you know watch instead of listening to me ramble about it you should watch um digibo uh, ramble about bathos uh, let me see if i could find the video um hold on a minute sorry for my amateurishness this one Watch, go watch this video. I'll link it in the description. This is what I'm talking about. He talks about, um, he talks about, firstly, it's in 360 for no reason, uh, but it's kind of cool. He, like, wanders around. Anyway, he talks about, um, the, the, the film Machine Girl, and, uh, I think that's a, a good example of what I'm talking about. It's like, a where you go so over the, instead of, like, the sort of Western way of, of doing, like, an ironic over-the-top, so bad it's good kind of thing, where you, you have to point and wink at the camera every two seconds to make the audience know that, um, you're, you're, hey, it's ironic, guys, it's ironic. The, instead of, uh, not taking yourself seriously at all, the, the Japanese way of doing it is to just, uh, do the exact opposite and take yourself so seriously that it, like, goes over and, and comes back around the other side. Uh, which is kind of what he talks about in this video, and that's, that's, there you go, that's exactly, that's kind of what this, um, song is, if you think about it, it's super wacky, but just the fact that it's Death Grips, they can make it work, same with Baby Metal, 
Do I make myself clear? Thank you.